So Amaro here um, from Portugal, he works uh, for IKEA and he is also the uh, chairman of the Portuguese user group and he is going to talk to us about multi-region failover scenarios in the cloud and uh, he will explain to us how uh, the cloud can be made a safe place. So, so uh, we are here uh, to see um, how we can turn the cloud in a safe place. How many of you have already servers in the cloud? Please raise your hands. Whoa. Okay, so this, is se this session is for you, definitely. <laughs> uh, you are in the right place. Um, grab this. Well, I'll go here. So, my name is Ricardo Amaro. I'm from Portugal and, and I'm a, a cloud systems engineer. I work for uh, Acquia in the operations team. Uh, what we do is that we provision servers, we manage these servers, we arrange solutions for performance, and we deal with uh, bare bone critical issues. So uh, if everything is failing, the last resort is ops. So that's what we do. Hosting in the cloud. The agenda for today is why the cloud? We're going to talk about the cloud hosting, see the AWS, Amazon regions, see how to, s how to make a failover, compare the solution between DNS failover and CDN failover. We're going to see file replication. Actually, we are going to configure file replication, also database replication, and I will show you a complete setup uh, out, uh, well, that you can do actually for you, from yourself. Uh, this will be a basic demo. And this demo will be uh, like a multi-region shot recipe that you will be using two cloud servers on US, two cloud servers on EU. Uh, I, I hope you understand US, United States, European Union. Okay, so you're already on this subject. Uh, we will use Ubuntu Linux for this. Uh, we will use the Gluster Unison solution. We will install the LAMP stack and Drupal and Tungsten for MySQL replication. So, why the cloud? I'm sure a lot of you have your own reasons, but since this is a Drupal con, I'm sure also that the major issue is to solve the scalability of Drupal. And like Dree says here, this was written like in 2008 when he started Acquia. And one of the mission criticals of Acquia is to make Drupal the most known and used content management system. We actually don't develop sites on, on Drupal. We just host them. So we work with a lot of partners. So in a cloud infrastructure, we, or a moving infrastructure, which one of these uh, do you think uh, Drupal uh, will be for a, let's, let's say a, a, a media site, a, si a newspaper site? Which one? It will be on, only a cloud infrastructure fixed or like a moving infrastructure that you'll have the site living and always changing and evoluting. Probably that's why you choose Drupal to, to construct your site. But while it's moving ahead, uh, you must have the notion that a spike can uh, ruin the day and probably a bad setup of your cloud servers can ruin the whole month. Imagine a media site, a newspaper, 
that we lose like visitors income during one month because of a bad setup, a company that didn't a good host, didn't do a good hosting, etc. So why taking chances? We have really to take care about our cloud solutions. We know it's cheap to, to put in the cloud, but we have to make it safe. So the cloud offers us uh, a series of um, uh, services. The first services that it, it offers us, and it's the one that we're talking here about, it's the infrastructure as a service. Uh, of course, you have the platform as a service or the software as a service. Uh, there are other companies, they, uh, they, they do dedicated Drupal hosting with software as a service. We also have like Drupal Gardens is software as a service. About the, the, the cloud regions, uh, I'm sure you all know, know this. There are several um, uh, data centers around the world and the ones that we are focusing today are the ones in uh, US and EU. We, of course, um, now uh, uh, Acquia is starting here uh, on Asia Pacific and we'll start soon using uh, Sao Paulo. So, from small to big, what we have in terms of Drupal on Acquia is an offer that starts with one server. Who knows, uh, who, who have, has used already this product? It's DevCloud, yeah, okay. So DevCloud is just one server, no failover. Uh, if, if the machine goes down, we have to put it up again, so it's you have to reboot or relaunch the instance. It's, it's how, it, uh, how it is. But it's because it's a development. It's DevCloud. It's for developers. Because if we're talking about scalability and we're talking about insurance that the site will always respond, we have to start to use the managed cloud. And in the managed cloud, um, the simplest setup is this one where you have two balancers on the front then you have two webs and then you have two file systems with database replicating to, to each other so you can see if one balancer fails it will switch you to the other if one web, web fails it will switch to the other and the same for the, the FSDB the file system database. And the theme of today is this one, is when you have two different regions, and this is very difficult to set up, because normally uh, you have to cross, um, uh, you have to deal with some issues regarding uh, the, the passing of the data between, uh, between uh, um, regions and uh, the asynchronous um, um, nature of this. So if a server is not responding now, it could respond later. Cloud providers. For, for us, we are using now uh, Amazon EC2, but we could be using a lot of them. Uh, so you have a source here. These slides, by the way, they will be available later. You can uh, check here a very good comparison sheet where you have um, uh, prices and features of the several providers. But there are other providers on the cloud, and these are the dedicated cloud hosting. One of them is Acquia, and what we do now has these numbers. So we have, this is only on managed cloud, not on dev cloud. Dev cloud is like increasingly going up and going down in terms of 
uh, people that are using and then switch to managed cloud when re they really want to put the site uh, up and running. So we have above 600 customers, a total of 2,300 servers. Uh, that's basically managed by me on the GMT of <laughs> Europe because, well, we're a small operations team, but since we have everything automatized, it's, uh, it's uh, fairly good. 7.7 billion requests served per month, 1.4 billion page views per month, and about 133 terabytes of information delivered. And these are basically the major uh, clients that we have. It's large media, uh, global political, and uh, large news. This, of course, the responsibility of this infrastructure is divided between us and Amazon. So this is basically the diagram of all this infrastructure. We have Aquia Cloud, then the application, of course, is Drupal. Then we have the LAMP stack, Amazon EC2, which has the virtual structure, network, physical media, and physical security. That's their responsibility. And so we have the security, availability, and compliance in all this diagram. Another uh, company that uh, uh, now spawned uh, lately was uh, Pantheon. Uh, they are very promising. Uh, they, they raised like uh, a lot of money now on uh, financing from, uh, from the Foundry Group. And well, we hope really they have success but it's good for Drupal. We have also Omega 8. They use Eager uh, 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 or Iagir. Some of you will say one thing or the other. Doesn't matter, but it's, um, it's this. Uh, who knows Eager from here? OK. It's a very good uh, hosting uh, platform. So you can follow the discussion here. Cloud outages. outages. It's, it's been a hard journey because a very large number of companies don't have a dis disaster recovery plan. We have, but still, on 24, 21st of April 2000, 2001, it was a major, major, uh, oh, you're <laughs> you saw it. <laughs> it was a major crash in AWS and, uh, of course, Rackspace just, sorry? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to uh, just refer that, yeah. Um, so this, this were, was really a, a way that Rackspace took some ground from, from AWS. Then in December 2011, uh, a lot of people don't know this, but Amazon just told us, well, uh, we have a lot of servers. They are on degraded hardware. <laughs> they are going to be <laughs> shut down. You have to relaunch everything. So they were like, Pfft. Uh, we, we were relaunching machines like uh, two weeks or something, yeah. And like you said, in June 2012, we had a massive, massive outage damaging hundreds, hundreds of data volumes and instances. And this was uh, in US Virginia data center because, uh, well, they tell it was a storm. You probably have heard about this case. So you have to plan for failure. That's what we are talking about today. And we give uh, our customers a production scenario and a staging scenario. The production scenario is this one. Um, what we do here is to have a CDN. We advise customers to have a CDN on front. Why is that? Because it's easier to follow. Then the CDN is connecting to those balancers that you saw in the first diagram. And these balancers, depends on what's active now, they are connected to a series of webs. Depends on the client, can have like, we have a client that's, that has 24 webs, that's <laughs> massive, and we have clients that have like two webs. And also the webs can have different sizes, in memory, in uh, CPU, in, uh, um, uh, uh, well, disk, in 
like, like you when you spawn an instance on AWS. And on these webs, it's Drupal. Drupal is there as a file system, as a file, uh, in the file system as a doc root. And it's being um, uh, shared by these machines over Gluster, and then it's r synced with, uh, with a process, a constant process, to the other region. So we're talking about here, you can make a line here and divide and see, for instance, this is, for instance, no, this is really EU and this is the US. On this part, you have uh, a lot of servers. They are just standing by, just waiting. Uh, can be on the end? Yeah, okay. And unless it's a small question. Yeah, wait for it, wait for it. Yeah, that's, that's I, I, will, I will talk about them, yeah. So, uh, what, what we have here, it's basically a, a, a process that's uh, running on, uh, 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 at this moment for some clients. And it's called the multi-region setup. Um, MySQL, it's being repli replicated uh, with Tungsten, and we also, we also uh, see uh, how that is uh, used. The staging scenario. There was a request from this special client. He asked us, instead of having machines on the same region, if they could test mach machines, of course, in a smaller uh, quantity, but to have the development and the staging between two regions. This, this was the smallest setup that we could uh, uh, get to. I think it's clear enough. So the failover. How to do the failover? The failover between uh, regions can be done uh, by two ways, um, at least. And the preferable way is this one. It's called the CDN switch. And since we give the customer two balancers, one in region A, the second in region B, we give the customer an IP. And we tell them, if it fails on region A, just switch the CDN IP where it's requesting, where it's making all the requests to the other IP. And this has been working uh, quite uh, fine. The other would be to have no CDN and low DNS, uh, uh, low TTL on a DNS um, that's connected to an IP directly. But in that case, you would have to wait that DNS cache expires. So it's kind of problematic. I would not advise that. So, <laughs> what? Everything is freaking, yeah, yeah, it's true. <laughs> or a C name problem, <laughs> actually, uh, on, on AWS. Um, so, always use, elast this is like a hint for you, always use elastic IPs. They assure that when the machines restart, you will have always the same DNS name, internally or externally, and the IP, it's the same. It's the same inside, which is different from the outside IP, but both are the same. Replication software. I'm sure that most of you that you use, uh, you know um, uh, Gluster uh, file system. I'm going to install uh, here in the video so, so you can see for the ones that don't know it yet. But please use the last version. Yeah. That's, he's laughing because that's the reason we use rsync, of course. But still, I would advise make always an asynchronous um, uh, replication between regions. So to configure uh, Gluster, it's pretty easy. They, they went from version one, two, and now in version three, it's, it's really lame to configure. It's like only these commands to configure Gluster. And on the end, of course, you have to uh, put on the FES tab 
amount for your Linux server. So let's see the video. Have our server. So we have our servers. They are running on European Union, and uh, we were uh, given this uh, DNS name, to which we are going to connect in order to create cluster on them. So the first thing to do is to go inside of these machines. The EU machines, they are more... Slow. Also for the second one. I don't know why. We are uh, doing here the third and the fourth server in our uh, multi-region cluster. Okay, so you're good. And we can now start to create our bricks. Uh, in this case, we are going to create two directories uh, where Gluster will keep its uh, files. It's, it's we all should in not the ever, ever yeah. write or read directly from them, but it will be the place where uh, Gluster keeps it. Now, we are going to um, install Gluster itself. So it's a simple apt-get install command on this one and this one. Uh, notice I created another directory that was uh, GFS, MNT GFS, and that directory is uh, where we are going to actually mount the cluster network file system. Okay, we're all set. So now what we are going to do, <coughs> the cluster is running, uh, what we are going to do is to probe uh, from one server to the other server. So this server will probe the fourth server. As for that, we are going to use the TNS name. Okay, worked. And this server here will probe the server three. That's done. Okay, so and and of course we can check the status. It's connected. Great. Um, what we are going to do next is to create a, the actual volume uh, that will use these two bricks, and for that we will use the command uh, volume create and in this case volume one and we will say that it's a replica of two bricks and we will uh, say that the first brick is on this DNS name and the second brick is on this DNS name so it's great okay uh, we created the volume uh, it seems okay and we can just get the volume information of it, volume info, it's running fine, and we can start now the volume. Okay, it started. So the next step will be actually to mount this uh, volume on our uh, mounting point. And for that we will use um, a file that was uh, automatic generated by Gluster itself and also with the options of uh, the network file system. Good. So if we write sudo mount we can see that it's mounted then we can check actually if it is there great and we can uh, touch a file inside just to check okay um, touch 
good. Uh, of course, we can ls the file. It's there. Uh, you can actually, if you want, you can see that the file is also uh, on your brick, but you should not uh, go and touch it. And now we go for this server here, where we are going to do exactly the same mount. And we are going to see whatever is inside of the mount. Yeah, our file is there. So it means that our cluster is connected. I can uh, put this uh, command here uh, either on RC local or on FS tab. So when the uh, server starts, uh, you will have the um, cluster mounted already. Okay, I hope you all understood uh, this demo. I, I made the video because normally we have uh, Wi-Fi problems <laughs> in DrupalCon, uh, and I don't want to make the same mistake um, I've been uh, seeing. So, in terms of Gluster, uh, you have to know that on, on uh, EBS volumes, that's what uh, instance used on AWS, uh, they have not so good performance. So the best thing to do is always to go around it and create some tweaking on, on, on uh, um, uh, EBS volumes. So always choose the instance that will have one gigabyte uh, connection. And since you have uh, 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 20 megabyte per second uh, for I.O., you should probably make eight devices together uh, as a write zero or a stripe, so you could use the velocity uh, multiplied by eight. Oops. What? Oh. What is happening? Okay. Um, in, the, in the previous uh, drawing you saw uh, our sync replication I think I think uh, to have a replication that's still asynchronous and it's not constant because you have the server trying to probe the other server constantly and this takes a lot of CPU from the from the machine itself I think to have replication both sides it's the best way to do it uh, this could be discussable of course uh, other people uh, uh, can can come here in the end. Let's discuss. I think it's always good to have other ideas. But if we set up a cron with Unison that's replicated both both sides, I think it's a good solution. You could have another other solutions, and I'm I'm willing to hear them. So uh, I had this uh, video. How to set up now? Good. The lamp now that we are have uh, already our machines configured with cluster, uh, next thing we'll do, the next step will be to install the lamp stack and also use Unison to replicate Drupal across the whole four uh, servers. Um, using multi-region uh, setup. We will start to uh, go to the um, to the file system and to create here a series of uh, directories that will keep our configuration files. They're all Next the we will link these directories to uh, the, um, the dedicated uh, to the f to the f system files uh, they are uh, on etc and on var next thing to do will be to install our uh, lamp server also here in sorry also here on this server we this have video, to do I that. Made at three in the so the next thing we'll, we'll install the lamp server on this 
uh, the third server it will request for a password and we will let it uh, install and we will install the LAMP server on the force here put the password okay it's installing so while it's doing that we can go here and uh, switch to the web directory where we have a web files for Apache and just get the latest version of Drupal so we can enter, enter it it's a little bit slow One of the things that I saw in this uh, 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 testing here. is that the EU machines are really, really slower. I Great. Can assure you. We have the Drupal 7 untarred, so we will move this directory to a directory called Drupal itself. And we will change the user of this um, series of web files to the user of Apache. Good. This one already finished. Let's see if Gidi PHP Gidi is already installed. Okay, it's it's doing that. And the next thing to do we is to actually create the site where we'll have a Drupal uh, site. And for that we will use here the sites available directory and I have here a neat command one line wow. command that will transform the default site into a Drupal site so we will enable this Drupal site and we will disable the default Apache site that comes with Apache we'll restart here good and we will restart here last thing I want to check is if we have our symlinks correct this is important because you will have the correct. same configurations on both servers actually on the four servers at the same time and this is correct. change on one great replicate so one. we should be all set um, at least uh, regarding the file so what we can do now is uh, since we have the DNS uh, of this server we can just put the DNS here and see if the site appears it does great so let's see if the other server also responds to the same thing perfect it's installed so the next thing to do will be to use Unison uh, to replicate these files across the regions to the other servers so let's clean this up here just change to GFS okay and we will have to create special keys uh, with with SSH to connect to several servers so the first thing to do will be to install uh, Unison on all of these servers that's another reason to use Unison these or the RC it's a question no. of security Here because in this case either you would have to configure a firewall to only Good. accept connections on that it's port on installed. that glass report or you use uh, a command like Unison via SSH so I'll on encrypted. this server it's the Good. third server that I'm working in I will just go to the keys directory and I'll generate ID MR, MR 
uh, multi-region key it's done and we will put this key already on our authorized keys also here on our authorized keys good so you can see that here you already have the keys because they are replicating so I'm just going to grab here the pub and I'm going to oh no. put now this saw my key, key. <laughs> on that's the pub key oops minus E and I'm going to put this key on my authorized keys good we should go here to the third server now and just uh, connect to the other server. Uh, how will we do this? Uh, I have here a, a command. It's uh, unison and then you pass some arguments for SSH and then you tell that uh, the uh, server and the directory that you want to be replicated it's that one and also the local directory to be replicated it's that one so you go you go now and pass this series of commands and the magic starts okay it's now copying all of the things multi-region and it's copying both sides this is the big difference between unison um, and uh, common rsync so if you go now to the US and we will go to this server we just go to the GFS and we'll see that everything is now uh, replicated here to the the other region and since this one the second server is also being connected uh, these both are connected with cluster you have the same files so at this moment we have the full sync configured for a multi-region uh, replication the only thing that we are missing is that we have to put this command into a, a cron job control e and yeah whatever can be that one and we just say okay um, five minutes we will replicate use this command to replicate and we can put this into uh, lock good so we just now save this file and we will be sure that in five minutes this server will replicate to the other server uh, continuously at the moment we have already sort okay so this this was the the installation of the lamp and the unison uh, with Drupal itself and now we go to the text and replicator which will be much much faster because I cut uh, some parts of the of the thing 
uh, as, you, as you know, notice it, these commands are actually normal commands that you should uh, know from <coughs> other stuff. So you can build, this, this you can build from your, for yourself. There is no proprietary stuff around this. So Tungsten is, is a tool that serves to replicate MySQL uh, in a secure way because it uses SSH also. So you, you can use it actually, since you already has the, have the keys on uh, um, uh, all the servers, now you can install uh, Tungsten on all the servers. And you can check if the servers are all online just with one command, and you can just uh, have an uh, overview uh, about the, the status of all databases and all servers. Uh, this is a very important thing. Most of the people don't know this. We submitted a patch on uh, Drupal 7.12, which is uh, there is a failure on a replication, uh, on the My MySQL replication, if the SQL mode is not defined. So what we do now, this is kind of an internal <laughs> secret, but it's not really a secret. Uh, what we do now is like use the, um, this SQL mode on settings.php so that MySQL does know it's only this SQL mode, you should use this. And it will not break. Yeah, yeah, it is. Good point. <laughs> Our replication of the files done and working. The next thing to do will be to create the database replication with Tungsten. Tungsten has a series uh, of uh, difficulties where replication breaks on Drupal 7, but um, in Acquia we managed to create here a little trick which is to create uh, an SQL mode on settings.php uh, and this will uh, keep the replication stable uh, within uh, Tungsten. So we save this file this will be our settings.php file and we will use this file in our uh, Drupal site. Tungsten uh, is uh, not easy to install but I have already prepared a series of commands. They will install uh, our three uh, master slave, our four master slaves, and for that I have here a series of variables that I will use with the DNS names. I will put these variables on uh, several uh, on the several servers. And since we have already installed the master slave uh, servers on these uh, servers, we will um, now install for every uh, server in our cluster, we will install the uh, slave service. So the first one. Second one, on the third one, and on the fourth one. So what's what it is doing now is actually to uh, enable the slave service on these servers. Okay. So the service is now installed on uh, 
each of the four machines and you can see that uh, tungsten is online uh, so we will do now is uh, to watch our service here and here <coughs> and install our database So we'll get here to our Drupal installation. And we will install a minimal Drupal 7. Okay, so our installation. Okay. Okay, so. Uh, I'm I'm very sorry. The videos were at late night, so I was um, some kind of um, tired. So the, the the thing with tungsten is really that you should have uh, uh, that thing of the replication fixed, and we we should have uh, uh, a consideration. I will give you these slides. It's not imp really important that you have all the performance tips from AWS, but it's really important that you see our running <coughs> site now. So our installation is done. Our site is running on two um, regions now and it's based on a cluster of cluster with tungsten and unison and the machine should be replicating to each other. Let's see the site here is the site and let's check for the replication so for that I prepared here some tabs you have server 1, server 2, server 3 and server 4 they are now clean it's based on the actual installation and we can create some content to it and let's check after this the other server so uh, let's create the content type first let's say it's uh, page and page save let's create content let's add some test page test summary and test body let's save this one and with this we should already have our home page modified let's check the home page so the test page appears on the home page. Now let's check the second server. See, the test page has already replicated to the second server. So if we put uh, anything into the database, it will be replicated. Also the files, they will be replicated to the other servers. So this ends our installation and thank you. So one, one, one thing with this do-it-yourself uh, scenario, as you've seen, it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of patience, it takes a lot of effort, uh, and basically it's a trap. So <laughs> OK, now I can unveil. I was like trying to do all of that stuff like late hours after my work without <laughs> And finally, I found out. Yeah, it's uh, if if someday I'll, I will advise someone to do that, I will say, yeah, uh, just try to choice, do a smart choice, choose a, a hosting with Actia. If not, if your business is actually to host, then probably this presentation will be uh, very interesting for you. In any way, I think it's very important to choose AGI in the cloud. Don't use just one server. Please uh, take care of your customers because uh, this will have reflections on Drupal, uh, um, well, the way that people see Drupal. So any questions that you have? I see there was, like, you had some questions? Yeah, okay. <laughs> DNS 
No, the DNS failover in, uh, in uh, you're talking about the, the balancers that we use on Acquia, right? Yeah, like in the, uh, the actual yeah they, are, they are automatic. Like in the same second that the machine starts to fail, it will fail over to the other machine. So it's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we, we put a lot of uh, construction in terms of our infrastructure, which, which is called the fields environment. It's a very technical and inside uh, thing. But that basically automatizes everything that we have in Alpha. It's a field way that we use Puppet, we use uh, Ruby, we use uh, a lot of bash scripts, a lot of uh, PHP inside of uh, Drupal. Uh, we have checks that go using Drush to see if the microphone, sorry. Good. Sorry. So sorry, my please. question is, uh, if you have or have done a cross-region replication between uh, more than one region, and uh, the second is if uh, you, you've been in position to handle a very, very big amount of files and in a big amount of data, mm. I'm talking about Mm -hmm. Yeah, hundreds of gigabytes. That's what we do, actually. Uh, what what is, what is your uh, really your? Uh, um, it's 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 about the the size of the the file, uh, the amount of files. The amount and the size at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, it's it works. Uh, if if you do it uh, like in our uh, infrastructure, uh, there should be no problem. The only problem is, as he stated, is uh, the the cluster that we use now. It's, it's, it's going to be upgraded now. And the new version of Gluster has no problems dealing with more files. And you have, of course, the problem of AWS. EBS volumes, they are slow. I assure you, they are really slow. In this case, uh, I, only, I only saw this after. But the, the volumes were very slow while installing. And this was because these two machines that I was using were in Ireland. <laughs> I don't know, but maybe the, the neighborhood is awful. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's, uh, like slow. It's very tricky because we have millions of files in the range of an hour. Thanks for two bytes, two bytes, something like it, that. It's user generated content. Yeah. Content speeds of about 125 per second. Yeah. The only thing that you have to really take care of there is that you don't have the files on the same directory. Just that. Uh, yeah, we have a structure, yeah. So you don't, you will not. Yeah. You sh you should not have any problem with that. At least what we've seen. But please don't put the files on the same directory. That will give problems for yeah. sure. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good practice on Drupal. Yeah. Yeah, we, we can stay later a little bit talking about this. It would be nice to have uh, other. This is like it's it's an unex an unexplored ground. Like <laughs> it's very hard. <laughs> okay, guys, uh, thank you. I have thank here. You <laughs> thank you. I have here three T-shirts. Uh, I will make just two questions. Uh, maybe you heard uh, what what is the name of the product that we have that has just one server on the cloud. Hey, raise your arms. Okay. <laughs> Take your shirt. So what is, maybe you, you were uh, paying attention, how many servers do we have on managed cloud at the moment? Raise your arm. Great. Yeah, but it was first. <laughs> okay, and Since you have the other question, I'll give this to you. Thank you. OK, guys, thank you. I, I appreciate your being here. It was really, it's a difficult demo. 
I hope you understand, but let's continue to talk about this. Yeah, yeah, the presentation, yeah. Even the video is going to be a lot. Yeah. In, in the Drupal, uh, ah, wait, wait, wait. Uh, please uh, look at, uh, go, go over to the, the session, the page session, and rate this session, okay? And you have the slides. I will upload them as soon as possible. And you will have the slides on the page of the session, okay? No, the videos will be done later. Yeah, there will be all the <laughs> Yeah, the SSH key you, you have it already. It's a token key, so it's a new. I, I'm sure you don't, you don't have no chance for that. <laughs> Only for the private one.
you are growing those servers in terms of web, then you have really good food as only web, as only Apache, nothing more. No database inside, no glass, because the volumes on, as I said, the volumes on AWS are terrible, it's so slow. No, it, it will, it will.